Welcome to the Retrotech Blower Door Quick Guide. Before we start setting up any of the blower door equipment, we first want to begin setting up the house. To begin with, we'll go ahead and make sure that all windows and doors are shut and latched. We'll then want to make sure that all interior doors are open to ensure we get an even pressure throughout the house. If there's a fireplace there, we want to make sure that that damper is closed. And if there's any combustion appliances, we want to make sure that those are set to off or pilot. We then want to make sure that any bathroom or kitchen exhaust fans are off, as well as any other ventilation devices that may be in the house. For any dryers that might be in the house, we want to make sure that those are not running either. Now we want to go to our thermostat and make sure that the HVAC system is off and will not turn on during the test. Same goes for any other ventilation devices that might be present that are controlled by that thermostat. Now we can go ahead and start unpacking our equipment. We will open up the sleeve that holds the frame and the cloth. We'll set the cloth aside for now, as well as the crossbars. These will be attached to the frame later. Once we finish unpacking the four remaining framing members, they will be aligned in a rectangular shape. When we begin assembling the frame, we wanna make sure that we're using the numbers on the corner of each frame. Number one on one of the long framing members will match up with number one on one of the short ones. We'll make sure that the rubber gasket is on the outside edge and that the cam levers are facing up. We'll then go ahead and snap in all four framing members one by one to complete the rectangle. And when you're ready to take the frame back apart, all you have to do is grab both long ends and shift them in opposite directions and it comes apart in one motion. But now we're ready to go ahead and install our frame into the doorway. Uh, so what we'll go ahead and do is pick whatever exterior door we're gonna use, open the door and set the frame inside the doorway. We'll then go ahead and loosen up all four knobs so that we can expand the frame out in both directions. Once we have the frame uh, sized properly to the doorway, we'll then go ahead and then turn all four knobs to tighten it so that the frame keeps its shape. Once the frame is sized, we'll then remove it and then prepare our cloth. There are a couple of different ways you can install the cloth to the frame. You can spread it across the floor like you see here, or you can drape it over the door and install it vertically to the frame. Both methods are correct. It just depends on which one you like the best. But here we're going to spread it across the floor. So once we have our cloth prepared, we'll lie our frame down on top, and then we will Velcro the cloth to the frame like you see here, starting at the bottom and then working our way up. There are tabs going up along the sides that we will use to attach the cloth to the frame. And then once we get to the top, we'll pull the last piece of cloth over the top of the frame and then wrap it in like a present. Once the cloth is installed to the frame, now we'll open our doorway back up and then reinstall the frame and cloth back into the doorway. We'll then make any adjustments to the frame that we need to make to make sure that it has a nice tight fit. So this may include loosening some of our knobs to adjust the frame to fit tightly into the doorway. Once everything is sized properly, then we'll go ahead and flip all four cam levers so that it fits snug into the doorway. Now we'll grab our crossbars. These are also numbered. Number five is at the bottom, which goes just above the hole where the fan goes in. Number six goes closer to the top, usually about eye level. Both of these bars also have a knob that you can loosen and tighten to adjust and they both also have a cam lever that you can flip once everything is adjusted to give the frame a nice snug fit. Retrotech provides two crossbars to give you more stability into the doorway. Once the crossbars are installed, now we're ready to install the fan. The fan simply sets into the elastic hole that you see here and then hangs from that bottom crossbar using a Velcro strap that goes through the handle. We want the fan to sit a couple of inches above the ground. If you're using the Model 300 duct tester fan as your blower door, insert the quick connect collar into the cloth first, then cinch it down to tighten around it. With the collar still installed, then slide the collar around the opening of the fan. Once it's snapped into place, then you can hang the fan from the lower crossbar with the Velcro strap. 
The side of the fan where you change the range is the inlet side of the fan. If this is facing you and you are inside of the house, then the fan is set up to depressurize. If the outlet side of the fan is facing you, then the fan is set up to pressurize the house. For this example, we're going to depressurize. In most cases, this is what you want to do to avoid blowing dampers open on bath fans and kitchen exhaust fans. Next, we'll install our power. If you're using the Model 7000, you will plug in the battery or the power supply. And if you're using the Model 5000, just make sure the power cord is plugged into the fan top and the power switch is powered on. Next, we'll install our tubing. The long red tube on the umbilical plugs in to the red port on the smart cloth. If you're using an older cloth, you'll go through one of the holes at the bottom. Then we'll plug in the data cable that will then go to our gauge. And if needed, we can plug in the USB to power the gauge. Then the yellow tube goes to the yellow port on the fan top. The other end of the umbilical, the red tube goes to the red port, the yellow tube goes to the yellow. And then the other end of our data cable plugs into the top of the gauge. And if you're using the Model 300 as your blower door fan, make sure you use the correct umbilical so that you hook up both the yellow and the green tubes to the umbilical, as well as the corresponding ports on the fan for both green and yellow. Using the belt clip, we'll then hang the gauge from the Velcro strap on the top crossbar of the frame. Next, we wanna make sure the gauge is set up properly. We wanna read pressure on channel A and flow on channel B. Here, we're set to read pressure on channel B, so we'll just tap channel B, scroll down, and then select CFM. Next, we wanna make sure that we have the correct fan setting. Here, we have a duct tester selected, so we wanna change that to our blower door. We're using a Model 5000, so we just tap the picture on the home screen, change device, and then scroll down until we find the device that we're using. There's model 5000. And then we're gonna start on ring A. If you are using the model 300 as your blower door fan, you wanna make sure you have the 300 selected. As you look at the fans on the list, make sure you select 300 and not 340 or 350, as these are the same fans, but used as a duct tester. The 300 is when this fan is used as a blower door. Then select the appropriate range and make it match on the fan and the gauge. To take a baseline, we want to make sure that the fan is covered. We can use the full B8 plate or the shower cap cover. Then we'll tap bias on the home screen, and then we will press the record button. Usually we want to do this for about 30 seconds, a minute if it's a windier day. We take a baseline reading to try and remove as much of the wind activity going on outside as we can. It's kind of like zeroing out a scale before we weigh something. Once we are satisfied with the baseline reading, we'll then tap record again and then back. And then we can see our baseline reading there at the top under channel A. Now we can uncover the fan and make sure that it's set to the proper setting where we want to begin and make sure that the gauge and the fan match just like they do here, both set to ring A. If this is a house you've never tested before, we recommend starting off at a lower pressure and then working your way up to 50. This allows you to walk around the house and make sure that everything is okay. So you're checking for odors, such as odors from a fireplace or some mold that might be present on the air barrier uh, to see if it's gonna be safe to do the full test at 50 pascals. So once you do a low pressure test and walk around and everything checks out and everything is okay, you can do one of two things to get to 50. You can use the jog button to slowly ramp the fan up, or you can stop the test and re-enter 50 pascals and hit set and let the fan go from there. In this example, you can see that we've gotten to 50 and we're getting approximately 2,500 CFM. We can use the at button to give us that precise reading of what it would be at exactly 50 pascals of pressure. You can also use this if the fan cannot quite get to 50 pascals when it is set to the open range. And to stop the test, all you have to do is hit stop and the fan will power down. And if you wanna get your reading and air changes per hour, you can just tap the reading on channel B and scroll down and select ACH. When you use ACH, you have to have the correct volume entered. You can see that right above the fan, just tap on volume, and then you can enter that into the gauge. 
and then you will enter in whatever the volume is. So for this example, we'll use 25,000 cubic feet and hit set. And then once we go back to our home screen, we can see that volume entered in onto the gauge and then see what our air changes per hour is in real time on channel B, all while verifying that we have the correct volume entered. That way we can see everything about the test on the home screen. When you're running your blower door test and you cannot reach 50 pascals, then you need to open up the fan more. For example, here we're on ring A, so we're gonna remove it to have the fan completely open. Be sure to match the same setting on the gauge. If you can reach 50 pascals, but you're not getting a reading on channel B, then you need to close the fan up some more. For example, here we're on ring A, we'll go down to the next range to B8. Thank you for watching, refer to your manual and reach out to our support team if you need additional help.